My name is Leo Smith. I've been working around the world as a chef and bartender for almost 20 years. I first came to Vietnam three years ago, attracted by their delicious cuisine, vibrant markets, and I've been staying here ever since. Join me in Vietnam A to Z as I discover more about Vietnam and its people. Alongside food, drinks play an important role in the cuisine and culture of any country. In this episode of Vietnam A to Z, our big story will be dedicated to coffee and the different variations of coffee in Hanoi. But first, to kick off the show, let's check out the art of tea mixology in our on-trend section. Thank you. What a very well crafted drink. It looks absolutely beautiful. Let's try. Very good. You can definitely taste the tea in there. It brings a bit of dryness in your mouth. It's very nice, not too sweet, not too sour. The egg whites add the texture. Very well balanced and well crafted. Quite floral. A little bit of spice in there as well, coming from the tea. It's very seasonal, suits autumn perfectly. I'm quite keen to see how it's actually made, so that, you'll have to tell me your secret. How do you do it? Nguy in Viet Dai is the runner-up in the category Tea Mixology of the Tea Masters Cup Vietnam 2017 competition. And also ranked second for the category Tea Masters Cup International 2018 held in Hue. Tea mixology has now become a familiar term in relation to beverages made of tea. It is the art of respectfully combining nature's most indulgent herbal beverage with other ingredients to produce tea-inspired cocktails. Is your class? Okay, beautiful. Let's get started. So, can we show the glasses? Show the glasses. Okay. Perfect. So. Hey, Boston. Okay. Okay, so our first, we fold in our gin. It's a jasmine tin. Jasmine tin? Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, Chicker about 50 ml of uh, the jasmine tea gin. 50 ml? Is this his first line here? Ah, uh, no. Uh, this side. This yes, side, okay. You see the slide here? Okay. 50. Okay, perfect. Dai guided me on how to make a tea-based cocktail step by step and it turned out to be not really hard for me at first try. So these are some very tasty syrups that you're using here. Is this something I can find myself in shops or something that you're making yourself? More of them I make myself. Except the spirit. I cannot make spirit. It's a jasmine tea with the taste of green. It's very nice. I love jasmine. It's salty. And would you say jasmine tea is the most popular variety of tea that's drunk in Vietnam? No, actually. But uh, the popular one, you know, the young people love milk tea. Milk tea, yeah. I don't like it. I want to you know, introduce to them the new one. So I make this one. It's a very tasty cocktail. I'm sure people of all ages will love this cocktail. Most the young people try this one. They, like, they very love it. Lemon juice. Wine. Tangerine roses syrup and especially jasmine tea. These ingredients seem to be simple but can blend together to create an attractive cocktail. Tea mixology is a new trend of drinking tea amongst the youth as well as creating a new profession. This new trend is included in one of four categories in Tea Masters Cup where the best tea mixologists compete to show off their creative skills with tea preparation and serving. This year, Vietnam, for the first time, has successfully hosted the event from November 23rd to 25th, with the participation of 29 tea masters from 15 different countries from around the world. The 
chính của cuộc thi đó là quảng bá các sản phẩm trà, các vùng trà và các nghệ nhân sản xuất trà. Ngoài ra là đưa đến một cái nghề nghiệp ngớ mới cho các bạn bartender. Ví dụ trước chúng ta gọi là bartender nhưng hiện tại ở châu Âu nó có một cái nghề mới gọi là tea tender. Có nghĩa là các bạn mà dùng trà để pha cùng với các loại đồ uống khác nhau và rượu, đặc biệt là sách thì họ có một cái nghề nghiệp mới luôn và rất nóng, rất là hot ở các nước châu Âu. Đưa đến những xuống mới để có thể quyến rũ hoặc là một cái cách mời mọc để cho các bạn trẻ uống trà vì trà là một đồ uống rất tốt cho sức khỏe. Trà rất hợp với nhiều loại rượu. Ví dụ là trà đen này. Trà đen nên nó cực kỳ rất là trung tính, nó thể đi với nhiều thứ với nhiều loại rượu khác nhau hay là trà xanh. Trà xanh Việt Nam thì đi rất hợp với rượu whisky và thêm một chút trứng thì càng tốt. Hay là đi với chanh thì muốn đưa trà một thứ cổ truyền, một thứ rất là lâu đời vào trong một ly đồ uống. Và ta sẽ một chút mới mẻ. All right, let's see how I did. Well, not too bad for a first time, but I'm sure that makes it a lot better. A popular drink like this, I'm sure he's made it many, many times. But it's been really interesting to see how he's using tea in cocktails. I'm sure it's a trend that's only going to get more and more popular. But join us now as we go around Vietnam and discover some more beautiful drinks. If you ask me, besides motorbikes, the most prevalent thing in Hanoi is probably cafe shops. There are a few things that Hanoians generally love more than coffee. People like to spend literally hours sipping their coffee. Some might say drinking coffee has become part of the culture here. And the history between coffee and Hanoi goes a while back. In 1822, French soldiers took the Hanoi Gate for the second time, making Vietnam a colony of France. One year later, the first cafe opened on Chang Thi Street. The cafe was open to serve French soldiers and officials. The locals eventually took a liking to the black and bitter beverage. More and more Vietnamese cafes appeared, and now it just won't be Hanoi about the city's many cafes. One of the most popular pastimes amongst the Hanoi locals is chatting with friends over an icy cup of coffee with milk. So this is it, Vietnam's most popular coffee, Cafe Sơ Da or No Da for some people in Hanoi. You see people drinking it on almost every street corner. You can see why. Simple, delicious, strong coffee mixed with condensed milk and plenty of ice. Really delightful. The most common recipe to make Vietnamese iced coffee, Cafe Sơ Da, is two parts coffee to one part condensed milk. Condensed milk was first used because it was cheaper and lasted longer than fresh milk. It was a good choice indeed as condensed milk created a very rich aroma and flavor for the drink. Even though the coffee can be quite strong, too much ice on a hot day can dilute the mixture. As you probably know, the Vietnamese are serious coffee drinkers. Everybody's drinking it here. But one thing I've noticed walking around, you won't find many Starbucks. Instead, small, independently owned coffee shops on almost every street corner. And as you'd expect with a lot of competition, there's a lot of really interesting techniques and variations. And we're going to be exploring some of those variations later on. This small alley leads to one of the most famous cafes in Vietnam. This cafe is called Zhang. It was opened in the 1940s. It was named after the owner, Nguyen Vang Zhang, who was a barista at the Metropole Hotel at the time. Zhang Cafe is famous for its trademark egg coffee. It's one of the top things to try when in Hanoi for many tourists, and I can't wait to see what it tastes like. Okay, so this is it. The presentation is lovely. It's served in a little bar full of hot water to keep it nice and warm. As you can see, the texture is kind of like a very thick cappuccino. That looks delicious. Okay, let's try. Wow. It is kind of unusual. Well, it's slightly sweet. They definitely use condensed milk in there. The texture is very rich, very thick. Like, um, almost like a milkshake in its texture, but of course served hot. Underneath, 
almost like an espresso, very strong coffee. You've got these two components of very sweet, fluffy foam on top, and then underneath a very strong coffee. But they come together very nicely, it's definitely balanced. It's kind of like a creamier cappuccino in a way, really. Mr. Zhang created the recipe whilst looking to make a cheaper version of the cappuccino. The recipe has been passed down for generation and generation, and is the pride of the family. Cái thời chiến tranh ấy, thời đó thì không có sữa, mà muốn có sữa thì mới pha được cà phê nâu, thì nó mới ngon. Còn cà phê đen đã đành rồi nhưng cà phê nâu muốn ngon thì phải có sữa. Thì lúc đó không có sữa vì nó hiếm. Thế là cụ mới nghĩ ra một cái món gọi là món cà phê trứng. Nó gần như là sữa, nhưng mà nó lại ngon hơn sữa và lại bổ hơn cả sữa. Những người ta uống người ta thích quá. Người ta bảo sao bác lại, ông lại làm ra, nghĩ ra món này ngon thế. Bởi vì tôi làm gì có sữa thì tôi phải nghĩ ra cái trứng. Đánh trứng, kem trứng thì nó cho cái cà phê vào nó thành ra một cái hương vị tổng hợp rất là ngon. Thế là tự nhiên là nó thành ra nổi tiếng. Và nó hợp với tất cả mọi cái thành phần. Kể cả người Việt Nam, kể người nước ngoài. Basically, egg coffee is egg yolks mixed vigorously with condensed milk, sugar, and some secret ingredients. The key is to create a creamy foam that doesn't smell or taste of eggs. Thousands of cups of egg coffee are made every day. In the past, before machines were available, they had to whisk eggs by hand. A cup of coffee would take at least 30 minutes to make by this method. That's a lot of dedication. Cà phê trứng thì chúng tôi phải làm một cốc hai quả trứng thì nó mới ngon được. Mà trứng ấy thì không phải là trứng gà nuôi mà là phải trứng gà chạy bộ. Cái trứng chạy bộ thì nó được cái là thịt của nó, cái cái quả trứng ấy nó khi đánh vào nó rất thơm. Còn nếu như mà trứng mà nuôi ấy, không bao giờ ngon được. Egg coffee has become one of the staples of the city and is recommended by many visitors. We never heard about uh, in Brazil or in other places that we ever been before uh, about uh, coffee with eggs. It's very, very delicious, it's smoothy, uh, it's very different to that we, we use it to uh, have in Brazil. My mom uh, used to do for me when I, uh, I was a child um, milk with chocolate and egg. So I think it reminds <laughs> a little bit. For the local people, egg coffee is more than a tourist attraction. It has served many generations of customers throughout many changes in history. Ở đây là cái độ ngọt của người ta cũng rất là nó rất là vừa phải mà nó béo mà nó ngậy, thơm, không có mùi tanh. Chúng tôi uống ở đây rất lâu rồi, à, thời gian phải 35 giây rồi. Tuần cũng phải uống đến 5 hộp, 5 hộp. Now, egg coffee is considered by many to be a vital part of Hanoi's character. Besides egg coffee, there are many variations of coffee you can find in Vietnam, such as salty coffee with cream and hue, or coffee with coconut milk. And before we move on to the second part of Big Story, let's take a short break in the Central Highlands, where there's a type of coffee that can actually be quite challenging to try. The highlands in Dalat has a cool climate all year round. It is also very suitable for growing coffee. The first coffee plantations appeared here almost a hundred years ago. Dalat is also where you can try a special coffee with pretty unique preparations. A Sabbath or weasel coffee has been called one of the most expensive coffees in the world with retail prices reaching 550 pounds or 700 US dollars per kilogram. I think this coffee is very good, but the flavor of it is very thick. I want to try it. According to farmers and fans of Weasel Coffee, Weasels only eat the best ripe coffee cherries and they do not fully digest the seeds. This alters the composition and the flavor of the coffee beans. Because the coffee is just a nó dùng cái cái mũi nó để nó nó, nó chọn mũi và lưỡi nó sẽ chọn những cái trái chín mà khi trái chín ra đây á từ à, mới có vị ngọt trái đỏ thấm này ừ. nó rất là ngọt nó ngọt và nó có mùi thơm the staff clean the cherries before feeding them to the weasels 
They can only eat coffee cherries on specific days of the week. They are also fed fruit, porridge and chicken. Their homes also need to be kept clean and tidy to ensure the weasels produce the best tasting coffee. Buổi sáng à, vào khoảng 7 đến 8 giờ là lúc mà trồn chim mà giấc ngủ à, sẽ vệ sinh sạch sẽ, sẽ lấy vòi nước thịt sạch hết bởi vì chuồng hay thiết kế theo hướng nắng, nắng khoảng 1 2 tiếng là chuồng sẽ khô ráo thì sẽ ở dưới nó không bị động nước. Chăm sóc trồn tương đối phức tạp mà đòi hỏi mình rất nhiều thời gian phải nắm bắt được cái thời gian sinh học của trồn thì mình mới chăm sóc tồn trồn nó tốt hơn. After the weasels are done with the job, the staff select coffee beans and clean them. They are then dried and kept for six months before being ground. Nông dân mình nó thật sự ra là cái giá cả không quyết định được bởi những cái tập đoàn thế giới quyết định hết. Tình có lúc sống được cũng có lúc lỗ. Mà tôi thì tôi muốn từ cái nguyên liệu của Việt Nam mình để đưa một sản phẩm có chất lượng nó có giá trị hơn, nâng cái thu nhập của bà con nông dân. Với ta hai nữa là dù thế này nữa là phải có thương hiệu. Minh and his partners have successfully built their own brand of weasel coffee named Chai Ham. They use siphons to brew coffee and also turn the farm into a tourist destination. With their unconventional approach, the farm has found a new path for Dalat coffee. They are gradually building their presence in both the domestic and foreign markets. In modern times, customers' tastes have evolved. New styles of coffee have also been introduced to the city. In the next part of our show, let's check out how modern Hanoians are enjoying their coffee. A heart shape, a swan, a rosetta pattern, and even a picture on a cup of coffee. All can be created through an interesting technique, latte art. Latte art is a method of preparing coffee by pouring microfoam into beverages containing milk foam, like cappuccino and hot chocolate, resulting in a pattern or design on the surface. Latte art has brought about new ways of coffee drinkers to enjoy their caffeine kick, aside from the commonly found black and brown coffee. Especially in the way Vietnamese uh, take the coffee, so sitting and talking, they can enjoy the art. Uh, of the latte. Um, so I think now it starts to be more popular in Vietnam, especially for the youth, the young uh, generation. Khi nhìn thấy cốc cà phê thế mình thấy là nó rất hấp dẫn. Thứ hai là trước khi uống ấy, thì mình cảm thấy là mình muốn ngắm những cái hình ở trên đó. Và khi ngắm nghĩa thì mình mới cảm thấy rằng là tự nhiên là nó có những cái hình đó nó rất là sinh động. Meanwhile, many cafes are focusing on providing customers with a better drinking experience. Specialty coffee is another option for coffee lovers in Hanoi in recent years. Specialty coffee is not the name of a coffee, but rather a way of farming, preparing and serving coffee that ensures the highest quality possible. Defects must be kept at minimal, and every little detail, such as temperature and water level, is carefully measured, all for the best possible flavour. Phil Kim is a barista from South Korea who's running Chapel, a specialty cafe. He has a wide selection of coffee beans which he roasts himself. I'm using Arabica beans and also I'm also using the, some different, different origin from other countries uh, such as Ethiopian, Colombia and Kenya. Arabica bean is uh, more fruity and sweeter compared to the Robusta, and I also want to introduce Arabica bean to the Vietnamese people. That's why I'm using the Arabica bean. Basically, the green bean, it doesn't have any taste. It's like grain. So after roasted, uh, flavors and aroma and taste will be developed. So you can see different tastes, like fruity, floral, and also sweetness from the roasting. So if a long roasting, it makes a heavy body and also bit increased bitterness. With a short roasting, it increases the acidity and more floral flavor as well.
mostly on the street you'll get robusta beans. And robusta beans are kind of bitter, so it tastes in the back, you know, it kind of hits you. Um, but here you have Arabica beans that uh, are just so clear. And um, the owner, uh, Mr. Philip Kim, he uh, roasts it right here, fresh in the shop, and it's just delicious, always fresh coffee. And you don't have to even have any milk or sugar. Just drink it straight up. It's so good, so delicious. You can taste all the different uh, types of flavors that they have here. To see for myself how the flavor of specialty coffee is like, I asked Ling, the head barista of Chapel, to show me one of her favorite coffees, the Ethiopian Geisha. We call it Geisha. It's just one of the um, variety okay. for specialty coffee. Uh, if you guys know, it's going to be like one of the best coffee in the world. Sounds for good. Arabica. I'm going to use 15 grams of beans because with 15 grams of coffee, we're gonna have 225 grams of the coffee in the cup, so it's gonna be like enough for the customer. So now I'm gonna put it in the, the grinder. In the meantime, I'm gonna prepare the paper filter. In Vietnam, we make coffee with Vietnamese filter, and that one's actually solely good for robusta coffee. And how exactly does the temperature of the water affect the end result? If it's too hot or too cold, how will it be different? It depends on the roasting level of the coffee right now. I have to decide like how fine or how close the ground coffee is going to be. And based on that, we decide the temperature. If it's too hot, it's going to be bitter. If it's too low, the flavor will be like really, really weak. This is a blooming time, yeah. Okay. So the, uh, right now, we're just kind of Heating up the ground coffee, kind of express Yeah, flavor. wake it up. Wake yeah. It up. Okay. Let it sit for 40 seconds, then I will start the second pour. You just need to know like the exact temperature to do the coffee. Otherwise, like higher temperature, easy to burn the coffee. You really need to understand the beans you're using first to then know what kind of temperature you're yeah. using. Yeah, that's very true. Even the colour here, it's a lot lighter than what you would traditionally see. Almost looks like a cup of tea. Yeah, this is why we use the paper filter for that. It doesn't have a lot. It so almost doesn't even smell like coffee. There's <laughs> a lot of fruit going on there. You can taste some of the darker fruits in there, some prunes, but also some um, the citrus, almost like there's apricots in there. Mm. So it's quite complex. Uh, absolutely no bitterness, almost a sweetness to it. You know, I normally drink coffee with, with milk, but you know, I wouldn't dream of putting milk in this, it doesn't need any. Making specialty coffee requires much more knowledge and effort compared to regular coffee. However, all of these types of coffee share one similar thing, the passion of those who love this bitter beverage. That's it for this week's big story. Coming up next, let's check out what we have for you in Out and About. Haiphong, the city with a great history, a rich culture, and a very vibrant cuisine scene. Among the many dishes you can find in Haiphong, there is one with a quite unique backstory. Anh em mình đang đi trong cái khu mà ngày trước nó là khu phố của người tàu ấy. Mà ngày xưa thì khi mà những thương gia người tàu họ đến đây thì họ có mang đến cái ẩm thực và một trong số đó có một món tráng miệng có cái tên khá là hay đó là Quy Linh Cao nhá. Quy Linh Cao is the name of a beverage containing homemade jelly. Every weekend, the place is full of Hải Phòng locals looking to let off some steam. This strange yet addicting bitter taste has been attracting customers to this shop year after year. However, to understand the secret behind Quy Linh Cao's charm, it is necessary to take a look in its history in Vietnam. The city of Haiphong developed into one of Vietnam's major commercial ports by the 19th century. A lot of Chinese traders did business here, and among their merchandise, there were the special Chinese medicinal herbs, 
as well as a secret recipes of how to use these herbs together. It is these medicinal herbs that give Quilin Cao its distinct bitter taste. Như các bạn ăn những cái vị ngọt hàng ngày nó quen rồi thì thực ra nó rất là sống ngán nhưng mà cái vị thuốc bắc và cái vị nhân nhẫn đắng của Quilin Cao nếu như bạn nào sẽ hợp và thích thì thành gây nghiện. The recipe for making Quilin Cao was passed down to Hương from her mother-in-law who was Chinese. The chef mixes together 16 types of medicinal herbs. The ingredients are then boiled, then keep on simmering for 6 to 8 hours until the herbs release all their flavors into the thick black liquid. Afterwards, it is poured into cups and left to harden. <coughs> Thì về đây thực ra là mẹ chồng chỉ nấu cho ăn chứ không là nghĩ là nấu cho mọi người. Các cụ á là tầm độ 7 80, có nhiều người đến đây ăn nói rằng tôi đã trở về là cái ngày xưa là có một phố người Trung Quốc ở Lý Kiệt đã bán cái món này, nhưng từ hồi người ta về người Hoa về nước tôi không ăn được ăn nữa. To suit the taste of modern customers, Quilin Cao is often mixed with yogurt and condensed milk. If you prefer something more traditional and more Vietnamese, you can try Quilin Cao with thot note or palm sugar. The jelly is slightly sweet and bitter, making it easy for it to blend in with other flavors. Even though Quilin Cao didn't originate from Vietnam, it was warmly welcomed by customers here. More than just a delicious dessert, Quilling Gao has become a part of Haiphong's culture. Out and About has concluded for this episode of Vietnam A to Z. We hope you had a good time learning about the traditional and modern sides of the drinks culture here in Hanoi. Thanks for watching. See you next time.